Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. I have already made a few videos on the Touch GFX, and among those videos there are the ones where I covered the model view presenter design pattern. After some of you pointed out some irregularities in those videos, I have decided to remake them. I have done more research on this topic, and now these videos will be as per the guidelines provided by the SD itself. They have also provided some examples on how to write the code, and these videos I am going to make, will keep those examples in mind. So today's video is basically the video number 3 in the Touch GFX series, and today we will cover how to send the data from the MCU to the UI. I have here a PDF explaining the backend communication. For now I will just point out the main highlights in this PDF, and you can read the entire thing later, the download link is in the description. As mentioned here, the model class has a tick function, which is called every frame, and can be implemented to look out for events. The model class also has a pointer to the active presenter, in order to be able to notify the UI of these events. There are two ways of interfacing with the surrounding system, either by sampling from the GUI task, or by sampling from another task. We will cover both these methods, but today we will see the first one, that is, sampling from the GUI task itself. If our requirement is not very time critical, we can directly sample from the GUI task. And to do that, we can directly call our functions inside the tick function. We will see this in today's video. So let's start the touch GFX and create a new project. I am using F750 Discovery Board. Give some name to the project, and click Create. I have here the background image, along with two more icons to indicate the light on, and off. I extracted these icons, from the SD's examples. Let's add the background image to our project. This is going to be the background image. Now I am adding a second image, and this will indicate the light is off. Let's change the name of this image to light off. Let's add another image, the light on. I am superimposing it on the light off image. Change its name to light on. Now disable the visibility for this image. Basically when I press the button, this image will be set visible, and it will indicate the light is on. And when the button is released, the image will not be visible, and the light off image will show up. I am adding one text area, where I will show the ADC value from the potentiometer. I have already explained the text area, you can check out the video on the top right corner. I am adding a wild card for the ADC value. I want to display the values from 0 to 100, so 3 bytes are enough. Set the wild card buffer to 1 extra byte, 4 bytes in this case. I am using default typography here. We also need to set the range for wildcard characters, so go to text, typography, and set the range under the typography you are using. 20 to 7 E hexa covers the entire range of useful ASCII characters. This is all the setup we need, let's generate the code now. Let's first see the simulator if things are all fine. Alright everything seems okay here. Now we need to write the code, so go to files, then go to the project folder, stm32 cube ide, and open the project in cube ide. Here is our main file, let's build the project once to see if it builds fine. We need to edit the files in the GUI folder, and we will start with the model first. As we discussed earlier, we will sample from the GUI task, that is, from the tick function itself. I am going to add a physical button, it is already present on the board, I will just enable it in the cube MX. The button has been grounded by default and when clicked, it will pull the line to VDD. Let's open the cube MX to enable some components. Let's 
The button is connected to the pin PI11. Let's set it as input. I am pulling the pin low by default, and when pressed, it will be pulled high. Let's also configure ADC. I am using ADC 3 channel 0. The pin PA0 will be used as the ADC pin. The resolution is kept at 12 bits, so our data will vary between 0 and 4095. I am leaving everything else to default, even the mode is not continuous as we will manually do the conversion. Click save to generate the project. I used the ADC3 channel 0, because the pin PA0 is available for the physical connection on the board. Let's sample the button state in the tick function. Here the below code will only run if the simulator is not running. We will first read the pin PI11. If the pin is high, the button state variable will be set to true. And if the pin is low, the button state variable will be set to false. We will now define this button state variable. Open the model header file, and define the boolean variable here. Now initialize the variable with some state in the source file. This default state will also be used by the simulator. So we have some errors, and that is because we haven't defined the header file for those functions. Let's define the main header file, as it already contains all the necessary headers. All right now we have to send this button state to the UI, and that's where the MVP design pattern comes in. The model sends the data to the presenter, which then sends the data to the view. The view is responsible for displaying this data on the UI. In order to send the data to the presenter, we will use the pointer which is described in the PDF. This pointer is nothing but the model listener. The model listener will call the function setLight, and pass the button state as the argument to the function. This setLight function is not defined yet, so we will define it in the model listener header file. Since this function is being called in the presenter, we also need to define it in the presenter header file. Now in the presenter source file, we will write the code for this function. Here we will call the same function in the view, and pass the state as the argument of the function. So again we will define the function in the view header file, and then write the code in the view source file. Here as we discussed, we will toggle the visibility of the light on image. So the state will simply set the visibility true or false, depending on whether the button is pressed or not. After setting the visibility, make sure to invalidate the image. There seems to be some error. It is because I didn't save the view header file, so it was unable to find the function definition. Keep in mind that you need to save the header files manually after making modifications, the build button does not save the header files. Alright everything is good so far, let's quickly see if the simulator is running fine. The simulator runs alright, and the light is off. This is because we initialized the button state with a false parameter. Anyway let's flash this to the board and see the results. Here are the two buttons on the board. The black is the reset button, and the blue is the one connected to PI11. I am going to press this button to turn the light on. So you can see whenever the button is pressed, and for as long as the button is pressed, the light is on. Our sampling from the GUI task is working alright. Let's add the ADC to our code now. 
First we need to define the ADC handler externally. Now let's write the code to read ADC values. First start the ADC. Then poll for conversion to be completed. I am adding the timeout of 10 milliseconds. Since autocomplete isn't working here, you can see the functions in the ADC source file itself. Now we will read the ADC value, and store it in the 16-bit variable. Finally stop the ADC. I am going to use this map function, which I took from the Arduino source code, to map the ADC values to 0 to 100 range. We will define this ADC val variable later. We want to map the value variable, the input minimum is 0, maximum is 4095, the output minimum should be 0, and the maximum should be 100. The mapped values will be stored in the ADC val variable. So let's define this variable first. Now initialize the variable with some value in the model source file. Now we need to pass this ADC value to the view, so we will follow the same steps we did for the button. The model listener will call the function set ADC, and pass the value as the parameter. Let's define this function in the model listener header file. Since the function is being called in the presenter, we need to also define the function in the presenter. In the presenter source file, we will call the same function in the view, and pass the value as the parameter. Since the function is being called in the view, we also need to define it in the view header file. Now finally we will write the function in the view source file. Here we need to convert the integral value to the characters first. You can refer to the code from the screen view base source file. Here the text area 1 buffer is the wildcard buffer we created, and this is where the characters will be stored. We are converting the integer variable val here. After the characters have been saved in the buffer, just invalidate the text area. Let's quickly see the process again. Here we are sampling the data in and we task. Then the model listener will call the function set ADC in the presenter. The presenter will call the same function in the view. And finally the view will display the data in the UI. Let's build the code now. Before loading it to the board, let's quickly check the simulator. The project runs just fine, with ADC value being 50, what we initialized the variable with. Let's flash the code to the board. Here is how the connection is. The potentiometer is powered with 3.3 volts. The yellow wire is the signal wire, and is connected to the ADC 3 channel 0, that is, the pin PA0. The ADC is working fine, with range as we set, between 0 to 100. The button is also responding well. So we saw how to sample the data from the GUI task. This method is good enough if the requirement is not very time critical. Remember that the display has the refresh rate of 60 Hz, that is, 60 frames per seconds. In case you don't want the values to update very fast, you can add a counter, and then perform the sampling after every third or fourth count. In the next video, we will see how to sample by creating another task. This is it for the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.